um, the, the new lecture is going to be the topic that you have right there, or? Uh, this is going to be a new topic, yeah. I believe last time you covered, well, at least you're supposed to cover 7.1, which I posted the lecture of. And we're going to go over the stuff you didn't get from it, and then move on to the new topic. So 10 and 14, uh, domain. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to briefly revisit the domain and range, uh, this time of functions. So domain and range. So, um, in general, for any um, let's say if you have a, a fraction, which happens to be like this. For example, a function over a function or a polynomial over a polynomial. Uh, for any circumstance, uh, the denominator can't be zero of any fraction. So whatever is in the denominator has or must be different than zero because division by zero is not is not defined if you divide any number by zero for example eight by zero you will get some error in the calculator or something because that this amount here is undefined we don't know what it is or uh, for some reason it's not defined in the group of real numbers the group of real numbers are which we studied in this semester that we talked about in the beginning of um, <clears throat> division by zero is not defined okay remember that that means we cannot have zero in any denominator. Um, so when we deal with functions of polynomials, uh, for example, if you have, let's say, 2x plus 1, some function, and some other function here, let's say, x. So always take whatever the denominator is, and you say this cannot be zero. That's basically uh, what we call the domain of this uh, could be function or it could be a, a fraction or it could be a rational expression as we discussed in the previous lecture. So whenever you say a fraction of any sort, just take whatever the bottom is and you say that can't be zero. So basically what this means is um, you can plug, if this was uh, some function, you can plug as we did before to graph functions, take some numbers here, two, three, four, negative one for negative three, for example, you plug those into here and get the y back. You plug x, you get y. Plug x, you get y, and so on. x is the domain that we learned before with the functions. y is the range. So basically, um, these are all the numbers we can plug. And for each one, we, we are guaranteed that we're going to get some value back. That's the y. For this function, or this fraction here, let's say we want to plug the values of x, we can plug all the values of x except one value. What's that value again? Zero. zero, that's right. We cannot plug zero here because uh, we end up with zero in the denominator. And again, you can't have zero in the denominator. That would be something undefined. So you can plug anything, but you can't plug zero. This is undefined. We'll get some, we don't know what we're going to get. So there is no way we can plug this, okay? But we can plug any other number and you get something back. So that's basically the whole idea of the domain, uh, the domain of um, a function. But how would you write function. it in like set notation? Probably, so that's yeah. right, that's what we're gonna do next. So first let's graph this. If you wanna graph this in a number line, basically again, you can plug any number here except zero because we don't want zero in the denominator. So any number basically in the number line except the zero here. So we don't want this number included. So we're gonna split this into two intervals, this interval and that interval. So basically we have a hole in this graph. So any number from here to the left or any number from here to the right. Since this is not included as we saw before with the graphs, do we use parentheses here or do we use brackets around zero? So this is the number zero. This is the hole in the graph. Parentheses. That's right, so the zero is not included, so we're gonna put parentheses here. 
Same thing for this side, the zero is not included. Again, why? Because we can't have zero in the denominator. If you try it right now, try to divide something by zero with your calculator or phone, you will say something like error or undefined or something like that. So this is the domain basically. All the numbers, or all the real numbers, this is the symbol for real numbers, all the real numbers except zero. This is what this uh, notation means. So the domain is basically, domain is an interval notation. So any number to the left of zero, any number to the right of zero. So this interval and this interval, we had to break it because we wanted to skip the zero. We are not allowed to use zero here. It's forbidden in this case. Um, that's why uh, this is the domain. So it's all the real numbers except that specific number here, zero. Sometimes could be zero, could be three, could be four. That that, that would be uh, that would give you uh, a zero in the denominator. So whatever the case might be, we avoid that specific number. And so it's this interval and this interval. And we use a little symbol here just to say end. So this is what we call the union, union symbol. <clears throat> you use this just to join these two. Uh, when you say interval and interval, use this U in between to say, to mean that we basically uh, want to join both of them. Okay, so X here is not good. Uh, what about this uh, example here? Professor? Miss? Uh, when I was, because I was doing the homework and I was reading the book mm -hmm. to do this homework, I saw one that said like domain equal and then they did like a set notation and they had X, a vertical line X equal not two and then the zero. Right, right. So here you can also, so you can, the same thing here is said X can kind of be zero. I expressed it with a graph. You can say it in interval notation, you can say it in a sentence, you can also set in a set builder. So you say the domain is x such as x different oh. than zero. They all okay. mean the same thing, they all are in different formats. So x such that x can't be zero. It just I just didn't know more. what the line was, so now I know. <laughs> so let's look, look, in a, look at another example. Let's see how this function. So this function here, uh, what is the value that you can't use for this function? One. That's right, so we don't want this to be zero. And for this not to be zero, x cannot be one. If x is one, it will be one minus one, it will be zero. So x cannot be one. <clears throat> so you take whatever the denominator is and you say the denominator cannot be zero. Then you solve this like an equation try to get the x by itself. Here we have to drive the x by itself. If not, here you can say plus one, plus one to solve it. So the, the number that, that's undefined in this case is one. Not zero itself, but the number that would give you zero. Because if you plug one here, it would be one minus one, it would be zero. So if you try to put the, write this in the same way, so instead of zero here, here, the number that's not good is one. So we're gonna put one, just for, instead of the zero, we have one and the, the notation will pretty much be the same. So that's the idea of uh, the domain and range of these uh, functions or rational expressions. Because rational expressions, as we've learned before, is something like this. <clears throat> it's a, basically a fraction. A rational expression is just a fraction but that fraction happens to have polynomials or functions in them with variables. So the one I'm at the top, only the bottom can be zero. It's okay to have zero here. Zero over one, for example, is okay. This is defined, but the other way around is not defined. Um, let me give you another example before we move on. Let's say you have some x plus one here, and you have two x minus four. Um, so, what number, or what do we do here to find the domain, or the numbers that are not defined for this uh, function? Solve for two x minus four. That's right, so at the bottom again, whatever it is, you say we can't have zero in the denominator. Can't be zero, and then you solve this to find that number. So 
to solve this. It's an inequality, so we solve it the same way we solve the equations. So we can add four here, add four, cancel these, two x can be zero, uh, four, and divide by two, divide by two. So the bad number here in this example is a four. So you can use again any number if you plug this if you want to use it. Here, I think it's two, no? Hmm? Two. I think it's two. Oh, I'm two, sorry. Four. Uh, two. Yeah. So the bad number here is two. So that's the only number that you can't use. You can a table to grab the function. You are allowed to plug any number, but you cannot plug this. If you plug this, you can't get a value. You would get something crazy in the calculator. It will say undefined or will not be a specific value. Okay, so you can write it in interval notation again. Just use that number that you can plug those here. So the domain here will be uh, two in this case. And again, union or and two and, and the infinity. That's the whole thing about the domain of rational expressions. Again, make sure this, uh, um, you can't have zero in the denominator, in the denominator and uh, solve the bottom basically to find out um, what number can't be used functions or rational expressions here. They're pretty much the same thing. So domain and range of rational functions. So questions 10 and 14 from homework uh, 12 are based on this. So it's very similar, just like this. Solve yes, uh, it's, it's, but uh, it's 14, it's, it's still confused. It's uh, yeah, uh, f of x is equal to 9x plus 8 by x. So yes. how to show that? That's very, that's very similar to 14. It would just be zero. It's exactly like 14. Okay, so again, uh, the number can, can be zero. Okay, so we pretty much already answered 14 here. And the other one, you answered just like uh, these two problems. Okay, so that was uh, from 7.1, uh, domain and range of rational expressions. Now let's go on with uh, addition and subtraction of rational expressions. So in 7.1, we'll learn how to simplify, multiply, and divide rational expressions. Today, we're gonna see how to add and subtract. It's a little different. Uh, it's gonna require something. So let's start with, um, <clears throat> yes, do them, let's do both at the same time, so. Addition and subtraction of again a rational expression is just a fraction. That's all uh, that that is, which is a fraction, which happens to have a polynomial here. So again, whatever polynomial or expression you have here, for example, g of x, whatever it might be. Make sure that's not equal to zero. You could avoid the number that would give you zero there. Um, <clears throat> so generally, when you add the fractions, uh, what is the first thing you look for or check? The least common denominator. The least common denominator, that's right. In general, if you add in, for example, one third and uh, some other number, two thirds. So make sure you have a common denominator or the same number here. If you have that, then you can go ahead and keep that same and you add the tops. You get three over three, simplify if possible, you get one. That's with regular fractions. The exact same thing applies also when you have rational expressions. So whether you're adding or subtracting, you, you have to have what we call the least common de denominator, okay? The least common denominator here happens to be three. <coughs> If you don't have the same number, then you can't add right away. You need to find the LCD. By the way, if you struggle with fractions, you can go back to math, math, math to playlist on my channel and watch lecture one and two. They're both talking detail about fractions. It's a, a prerequisite class for this class. So you can uh, check the two lectures, they talk in detail about how to find LCD, multiply You fraction, said math multiply, two, then, right? Yeah, this is from math two. So, so math two playlist. So our class is called algebra. Now there's a couple of other playlists for other classes. If you check the two first, very first classes from math two, it talks in detail about 
uh, fractions, everything about fractions will be uh, in this place. Okay, so like I said, whenever you add fractions, make sure you have the same denominator. If not, you need to find LCD. Um, <clears throat> so let's set an example now with something like this. Let's say a four, x plus one, and we want to add that to another fraction, let's say x plus one and maybe six. Now, um, we have two fractions. Can we add these fractions right away, everybody? Yes. What allows yes. us to do that? Yes. Because the denominator is the same. Yes, we can. Yeah, they're same. That's why. That's right. So check where the denominator is the same. Just like with these, it stays the same. So this stays the same. Don't add the bottoms. They stay the same. Just add the tops. 4 plus 6, that's uh, 10 over x plus 1. And that's it, we just added these rational expressions, no problem, because the denominator was the same. Try to simplify here, just like we saw in the previous lecture. Try to factor here, try to factor here, and then cancel out if you can cancel something out. For example, if you have two here and six, you would factor the two out and cancel two from here against ten. But in this case, there's nothing to, uh, it's nothing to factor, so that's basically the answer. <coughs> um, you may also have, let's say, <clears throat> okay, let's try to add these two fractions. Apparently, we can't add it right away because the denominators are different. What do you think we need to do here to make them look exactly the same? Multiply everything by by two by two. So this one here doesn't have the two. So in order for this to look exactly like this, we will multiply it by two. But you also have to multiply the top, no? Exactly. So we gotta have to multiply the top as well. Whenever you multiply one side of the fraction by a number, make sure you multiply the other side by the exact same number. So now we have exactly the same denominator. At this point, we can go ahead and add. Again, the denominator will stay the same, 2x minus 3. And we're just going to have to add the top. So we have 4 here plus 1. And that's 5 and 2x plus 3. <clears throat> no need to distribute this again. Always leave your answer in effect. Picture is minus three. Isn't it minus three? Uh, yeah, this is minus three. Same as here. Always leave it, like I said, factored. So you don't want to distribute it. Just leave it like that. Uh, what if we have two different things? Let's say <clears throat> x minus two. Okay, so we have x plus one, x plus uh, three. They're different. Um, so but we need to make them the same. What, what, do we, what do we do to make these? We have uh, to multiply here also. Multiply by what? x plus three. By three. Okay, so think about this as, let's say you have <coughs> someone like this. Uh, so you have three here plus one fifth. Let's make this h. What is the common denominator here, and how do you get it? You multiply both of them. That's right. So the common denominator here, basically, in this case, LCD is 15. Because they're uh, both basically can't factor, as you can see, they're both prime, can be broken down. Same thing here, can't factor this, can't factor this. So they're, they're, the LCD is basically the product of the two. So the LCD. It's just x plus one times the other denominator. Unlike this one, uh, we could complete one to look like the other one, but here, basically, this one needs this one, and this one also needs the other. That's why we're gonna multiply both, so the LCD will be this. So if you look at the first one, to make it look like this, what is it missing? So this one is missing. 
x plus 3, or to make it look like the LCD. So x plus 1 needs x plus 3. And if you times here by x plus 3, what do you do at the top? <laughs> same thing. So if you multiply here by this, you're going to multiply the, by the exact same thing. Just like you do with we did here earlier. Now back to the second one. How do you make it look like the LCD? You multiply by x plus 1. That's right. This one is missing x plus 1. So we're going to multiply here by x plus 1. <coughs> and also the top by the same thing. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have two fractions, which happen to have the same denominator. So this is, doesn't, doesn't have to be confusing. It's just something like this, basically. We have two fractions with the same denominator. So we're going to keep the bottom the same. We're just going to add the tops. That's what we're going to do here. Uh, so the denominator will stay the same. Okay, this is the same, it's gonna stay the same. We're just gonna add the top and the top here. So it'll be x minus two, x plus three, plus two x, x plus one. That's almost done. Uh, you could simplify this a little more if possible. Uh, what we can do here is maybe distribute this and distribute this and combine like terms. Um, okay, that for the for the bottom, again, do not distribute it. Just leave it like that. Uh, it's not the it's not that important now to distribute and combine. It's it's not a problem. But you can still do it. Uh, but the main focus today is to find the LCD and to be able to add. So that's uh, basically um, nearly the answer. Uh, we're not going to waste time distributing. We know how to do that. But uh, if you see this in the homework, <clears throat> the homework or something, make sure you um, simplify as much as possible. Um, and there's no canceling in this? Well, here, wouldn't you be able to cancel x plus 3 then? You can't uh, cancel. So, you, have, you have a plus here. Unless you had all multiplications, then you could cancel something oh. against something. But you have this plus here. You will have to distribute this, distribute this, combine like terms and factor, and see if you have a common factor. But again, let's not waste time on that. Uh, let's move on to another uh, example. Uh, another case is uh, you have. I have a question. Uh, yes. So how uh, how do we know when to use the LCD and then the GCD, like the lowest common denominator? <coughs> greatest common denominator? Uh, here, when you add or subtract fractions, you need what we call the LCD. <clears throat> the G, uh, G, you're talking about GCF, that's different. GCF is when you factor. Okay? Uh, sometimes you may need to factor this first. If it's not factored already, for example here, we're going to see some examples later. You may have to factor first, meaning the GCF, and then find the LCD. So the LCD is only associated with fractions. GCF is associated with factoring whatever expression you may have. Um, here's another example here. Let's say you have 2x, uh, 2x here, and let's see, <clears throat> maybe 4 and x to, let's make this one to, uh, another example of two fractions that we need to add. Again, apparently, you can't add these right away because the denominators are different. So we're going to try to make these the same. We're going to try to complete uh, the two until they look exactly the same. In this case, as you can see, we have one monomial. Unlike here, we had binomials, binomials. You may even have a trinomial, a trinomial here. But if you have, if you have a monomial here, um, to find the LCD, First, you would find the LCD for the numbers, just like you do with the regular fractions. Then, we're going to see how to find the LCD for the letters. Start with the numbers. What is the LCD for uh, 2 and 4? 2. The LCD, not 2. <clears throat> the numbers that they both can go into. Oh, oh four. 4. 4? So both of them go into 4. Again, everybody, if you're struggling with fractions, 
watch these two lectures, it's very important. You'll see a lot of uh, helpful examples. So it's very simple here. First, you find the LCD for the numbers, which is four. Then you go to the variables, and you take the variable with the lower power. Actually, the, uh, yeah, the lower, the lower, but the, actually the one with the higher power. Do not confuse that with the LCD. So GCF, when we factor, we take uh, the lowest power of all the terms, but with LCD, for example, here we have x3 and x2. To find the LCD, take the highest one. The, the highest power, so x to the third and x to the second. Which one of these, uh, both of them can go into? Is it x3 or x2? Both, so the both of these. So x to the third, so that's why we take the highest one. Okay, so do not confuse that with the GCF. That's when we take the lowest power. So first, the LCD for the numbers is four. Then simply take the variable with the third, with the higher, with the highest power. And that's it, that's your LCD. Two steps for the numbers, and then one for the numbers, one for the variables. Um, so now what's left to do is we're gonna try to rewrite these so we could both have 4x to the third in the denominator. Let me rewrite them again quickly. Um, okay, start with the first one. How do we make this look exactly like this? We need to multiply it by, by something. What is it? <coughs> by two. So just need to multiply it by two. That way we get this. Don't forget, you multiply it by two, you gotta multiply it by two as well. But don't when you get the LCD, that's the thing you multiply by? Um, <clears throat> that's what we did when we solved, when we solved the equations. When we solved the equations to get rid of the denominators. Okay, so when you solve an equation with multiple fractions, let's say one third, two x over four, one sixth. If you have an equation, you actually want to get rid of all the denominators. So that's when you multiply. For example, the LCD here is 12. That's why when you multiply all the fractions by 12 in order to cancel all the fractions. Because that was an equation. Here, it's not an equation. We're actually trying to add the two fractions. So we don't want to cancel the, the common denominator. It has to stay there. It has to be there to add. Okay, so we're going to make them the same first. Once they're the same like this, then we can add them. and we get a fraction at the end. With equations, we need to solve. We actually get rid of the fractions to get the x by itself. That's the difference to that. Um, <clears throat> what about the second fraction? How do you change it to look like the LCD? Uh, multiply by x. Um, multiply by, that's right. So this one to look like this, it already has the four, so no need to multiply, but he has x2. So turn it into x3, that times it by x1. Why? Because we saw before that when you times xa by xb, what is this equal to? xa plus b. Well, yeah. That's right, xa, XA plus b. So x2 needs to be multiplied by x1 in order to, to get x3. And if you multiply it by x1, what do you do at the top? Same thing. Multiply the same. Exactly. X1. Same thing. At this point, so we have two fractions with the same denominator. Again, we back to this. We have something like this. We're just gonna keep the denominator the same and add the times. Because this is four x to the third, this is also four x to the third. If you wanna write it out first, so it's gonna be four, four, six. Four x to the third plus five x and four x to the third. You can see these look exactly the same. So we can keep that the same. I'm just gonna add the top six plus five x. And as always, try to simplify if possible, factor this, factor this, cancel out any common factors. There's nothing to factor here, it's already factored. There's no common factor here, no GCF. So that's your, uh, pretty much your answer. Okay, so that's how you find the LCD. So depending on the situation, you basically, we uh, 
look at the two denominators and see what would be appropriate or the easiest way to find the answer. Again, always think about the regular fractions because the concept here is uh, about the same. You know, we just happen to have some x's there, but we try to find the answer in the same way. Um, um, are you able to do an example where you would go all the way through and factor and whatever? Because Yeah, yeah, definitely. Know. We're going to do that. We're going to do the factoring thing. So far, we didn't need to factor, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, let me first do an, another example of this before we go to something else. So let's say you have uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe six, four here. Okay, another, so far we have done only additions but it's very similar to fractions, uh, very similar to subtraction of fractions, same concept. So now we're subtracting, apparently the denominator is not the same, so we can't subtract right away. So what do we think, what do you think happens? Uh, or we need to find the LCD apparently. So what do you think the LCD is? Twelve. For the numbers it's 12. 12 X squared. That's right, we have x2, we have x1. So again, take the higher x. With the LCD, you take the higher x. So it would be this one, not this x. That's the first and the most important part. And it's not that bad. You can find this right away in a couple of seconds. Now, what do you do with that LCD? Times the first fraction by three, top and bottom. Okay. That's right. So we want to turn both of these into that. So this one, we just mm -hmm. need to times it by three. We'll turn into that. And then times <clears> the <throat> second one by 2x, top and bottom. Uh, that's right. So this one, we need to turn into 12x. First, we want to turn 6 into 12. So we're going to times it by 2. <laughs> and then we want to turn x1 into x2. So we're going to times it by x1 times x1 will be x2. And then do the same at the top. So we're gonna have to put times it by two also, times it by x. So, oh, so we don't just say x? Yeah, it's the same. Uh, x is the same as x to the first. We just want to emphasize the powers here. So these add up to two. And now we have two fractions with the same denominator. So it'll be 12 of x. I meant because you separated the two on one side and the X on the other, so. Yeah, I just want to uh, just make it clear that you, the two will oh, be, okay. but you can just do two X here and two X here, okay? And minus 10 X, 12 X this side. <clears throat> As you can see, we managed to make these the same. The rest is easy. The denominator stays the same. We're just gonna subtract these. They're not like terms, they don't actually subtract. Try to factor again, possible factor here, possible if not, that's our answer. Teacher, you multiply the second one by two X, right? Mm -hmm. Two X, yeah. two X. So we can we get all that. Up. So that's, uh, these are the cases where you don't have to factor because everything was basically already factored or it was a monomial. Now let's see what happens if you have uh, some situations when you have to factor to get the LCD. Um, for example, okay, so we have this uh, problem here. You don't have the same denominator, so we're going to find one. So before you find the denominator of any uh, rational expressions, always factor first if you have to. Always factor. That's the first thing you want to do. Here, we didn't do because, again, we didn't have to factor. Everything was factored already. But always factor first. It makes it a lot easier to find uh, the LCD when you factor. Can we factor this denominator? 
Yes. Okay, the common denominator is, the GCF is two of the X minus. X, X minus two. two. Minus two, plus one over. Can we factor this? No. What do you factor? No GCF, no difference of squares, no trinomial, it stays the same. That's the first step. Now, how do we make these the same? You multiply the second one by two. That's right. So this second one doesn't have the two, this two here. It has x minus two, which is good. Just missing the two here, and uh, so we'll multiply it by two and by two. Let's say we have the L, we have the LCD here. It's going to stay the same. I'm just going to add the top, so 3 plus 2, that's 5. Five. Factor first to find out. It's 3, it's plus, oh, okay, I thought it was a minus. Okay, factor first, find LCD. Um, <clears throat> let's make things a little more interesting here. Let's say you have 7. Maybe actually second... Uh, Okay, we're gonna throw in some trinomials now. Let's say I wanna add this to, maybe subtract it from. And we're gonna do x to second, minus nine, for example. Okay, so now, this is a little more complex than the previous examples. Again, we have two fractions we wanna subtract. We can't do that right away. These have to be the same, okay? These have to be the same. You can't just uh, say, oh, I'm missing 5x here, and um, I need to make this 6 or something else. It doesn't work that way. So uh, we have two different denominators. Again, what is the first thing you do in order to find the LCD? We, factor the we have to factor first. Exactly. Factoring, factoring, factoring. I keep emphasizing, as I said before, when we started factoring, told you this is going to be very useful for a bunch of topics and this is one of those. Um, so factor all, <clears throat> let's see. It's x plus 3 times x plus 2. That's right, so we're going to factor first. So 7, so this is a trinomial, I can always attempt to GCF first, if not we know that it's going to be x plus 2 x plus 3 minus, we have 3, and over here we have x minus, x minus 3, x plus 3. x plus 3. That's right, that's the first step. Uh, now, these don't look the same. They're not the no. same again. We're going to try to complete them. They're going to com complete one another until they look exactly the same. Just like we did here, this one was missing 2, then they end up exactly the same. These two, they do have something in common, but uh, they also miss some things. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you look at this one, what is it missing that's here? X minus three. That's right, so this one does not have X minus three. So it must have it in order to have common denominator. So don't forget to multiply top and bottom. Now, uh, back to this one. This one is missing something from here. What is it missing? X plus 2. That's right. So it's missing this one. So it's going to borrow that X plus 2 from that. Don't forget to put that same thing here, X plus 2. That's pretty much done. That's, again, this whole mess is just something like this. It's just two fractions with the same LCD. Okay, so don't let this fool you. Uh, look at this, think of it as 1 over 2 minus whatever, 5 over 2. So that's basically something like this. It's just two fractions with the same denominator. But teacher, then wouldn't you be able, because you're multiplying um, like the top mm -hmm. and the bottom, yeah. there's We're x not... minus 3, you can cancel them? Uh, or you multiply? We don't want to cancel them. We added them so we could be able to subtract. If you cancel them, you will get back to this. Okay. So we so want to leave them. After this? So now we're going to subtract. We're not done oh, yet. Okay. So now we're at this stage. So let's assume you have to distribute. 
Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do that eventually. So here, what happened, let's say, forget about this example. What do you, how do you add these two fractions? So let me just make this maybe seven, for example. How do you subtract these two fractions, would be? Seven minus five over two. That's right, seven minus five over two. That's what we're gonna do now here. We're gonna basically keep the denominator the same. We know it's long, we're gonna keep it the same. And we're just gonna subtract the tops. Whatever we need to do here, we may have to simplify a little bit. So that's this is just basically something like this, even though it has a lot of factors and parentheses, but it's gonna be just something like this. So let's do that. <coughs> the negative sign would affect the whole second part of the uh, top it should, part. Yes, it should. So let's start with this. First, I'm just gonna call this the LCD. Uh, I'm a lazy person, so I don't wanna rewrite it again. So I'm just gonna call it LCD. <laughs> I'm referring to this because it's a long one and I wanna make life a little easier. So now, I'm just gonna take this minus this. So the LCD stays the same, meaning this, so it's gonna be seven X minus three minus three and this. You're almost there. This is easier to simplify than the, uh, the, the one we saw previously, so let's do that. But don't forget to always simplify. Again, I'm just gonna call this LCD, referring to all these factors. So this seven X minus 21 minus three X minus six, just distributed, distributed these and you can combine my terms. <coughs> and be four X, what else? Negative. Minus 27. That's right, over the LCD again by LCD again I mean this. Um, try to factor this if possible. Maybe if you factor this, you can end up with a common factor with this one and cancel that out. It doesn't look like we have a common factor here. Uh, so that's pretty much the answer here. Okay, so that's our answer and our LCD is that. This is probably as complex as it can get when it comes to adding and subtracting rational expressions. Uh, you may have couple of polynomials here, trinomials. So factor first, once you factor, it's basically, a, it's like a puzzle, you gotta complete both of them to make them look exactly the same. See what's here, that's yeah. in there and so on until you make them look exactly like, uh, like each other. And that would be your LCD. <coughs> okay, everybody, any questions so far? Okay, so again, it helps. it helps if you know your basics about questions, about fractions. 90% of this is based on that concept. So just regular fractions. You have to know how to do those. This is just another version of it with some polynomials and uh, basically expressions and variables. We, we're not really solving anything. We're just kind of simplifying and factoring and finding LCD. That's basically. right. So today we're not solving, basically we're just adding and subtracting. Okay, we're just adding and subtracting polynomials. Next class, you'll see how to actually solve equations involving this. So you're going to take something like this equals one over three, for example. So you're going to see how to solve this equation uh, first, you're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to find the LCD. So you gotta solve this, but today we're just adding and subtracting two fractions. But next class, we'll see how to add these and uh, subtract them. But again, uh, I will post some older fraction, uh, older uh, lecture where I do this. I don't think, uh, you know, just to make it easy for you, so just, if you don't get it in class with the, you know, the professor who's substituting for me, if you don't get it, that's all, it's okay. Go to the homework folder, I'll post some lectures on this, uh, at least the older ones that I have. So it'll be basically this, you're gonna find LCD, um, and this time, that's when we're gonna multiply all by the LCD. Someone earlier asked, why don't we multiply by the LCD like we did before? So when you have, let's say, 
So when you have an equation like this, next class, so when you find the LCD, that's when you're gonna times all by the LCD. So you would say that we multiply all by the LCD yes. when next. we want to solve for an equation. Exactly, when you factor. So when you find this LCD, for example, this LCD here, so you're gonna write it here, here, and here, and then cancel out. Okay, but today we're not solving, oh, we're just oh, doing subtracting. Is, that because, is it because we're going across the equal sign? Because we have an equation, so you, you're gonna attempt to cancel all these denominators before you solve the equation. Okay, so, oh, but the, the, yeah. so for when you add or subtract fractions, you multiply both top and bottom by the same thing. So you could end up with the same denominator. But when you solve, the purpose actually is to get rid of the fractions first, not make the denominators the same. You want to cancel them as, as fast as possible. So this one, you're going to multiply all by the LCD. Then you're going to cancel something from here against something from here until you completely get rid of the LCD. That will be the topic of the next class. We'll be solving rational uh, expressions. You're gonna take a whole equation like this, like I said, equal something, and then you solve. Um, today, can you, are you able one. to go over, are you able to go over um, multiplication and division of rational expressions? Um, that's what was uh, supposed to be covered last time, and I do have a lecture on that. Did you guys see it? Yeah, the homework 12 really helped me yeah, understand. I do that. have a recent lecture. I have two of them actually. The recent one that I did last week and an older one from before. Basically, I discussed this in detail. Um, based on multiplication and division only, not the, the addition and subtraction. And also simplifying. Uh, we covered that there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so now um, let me. Let's do another example with trinomials and polynomials. Okay, maybe take a couple of uh, trinomials here. So it's six to the second and something like this and also all right maybe something like this <clears throat> and uh, some numbers here Okay, so again, this may look like a lot, but we do now do it. We have a couple of steps. What do you do first again? You factor. First, we have to factor. <clears throat> factor first. Once you factor, you find LCD, and then add or subtract based on what you have. Uh, Let's factor both of these denominators. Plus so, four you know, times x minus three. Plus four x minus three. That's right. Okay. Plus. Um, minus three x minus three times x two. That's right. X minus three x plus two. Okay. Uh, apparently, these don't look the same, so we can't add right away. So we need to complete them so we could end up with a common denominator. So what do you do here? Or what do you multiply the first one by? X plus two. That's right. So this one does not have X plus two. So this one has to have it. So X plus two. Good. Back to this one. What is it missing? X plus four. That's right. So this one does not have x plus 4, but it has the other ones. It has x minus 3, x minus 3, x plus 2, plus 2. Just one more factor here. And there you go. They have, they are the same now. They have the same denominator. Again, this is just like adding something like this. At this point, all this stuff, just as simple as this. We're going to keep the denominator the same. We're going to add the two, the tops. That's all we're going to do with this whole thing here. 
again, I don't want to write rewrite the LCD. I'm just going to call it LCD. So we're going to take this and add it to this. Write, write it out first before you distribute and simplify. Three. So that's 10x. I mean 5x. Plus 10, plus no way. Plus 3x. Mm -hmm. Plus 12. Over the same LCD. Combine like terms here. So we have uh, 8x. Plus, plus 22. That's right, 22 LCD. Again, factor, you see if you can cancel something. What is the common factor between these? Professor. Yes? Uh, it's 8, 8x. 8x, uh, yeah, this is 8. Okay. okay. You always factor. Uh, the common factor is? Is? Um, 2. 2. So if you factor 2 out, you get 4x. Plus? 11 over LCD. Does anything cancel here? No. LCD is this. We factored here and nothing cancels out. But if for some reason you factored here and you end up, for example, the X plus 2 at the top here, so you would write your LCD and cancel X, you cancel X plus 2 from here. But here, nothing cancels. So always factor and attempt to simplify if possible. In this case, that's your answer. And that's pretty much how you add and subtract uh, rational expressions. Um, always attempt to factor first if it's not already factored. Once you factor it, you can easily see what's missing from one denominator to look like the other. And if you don't need to factor, if it's uh, already factored or you just have monomials like this, that's not bad to find the LCD. Start with finding the LCD for the numbers. Then the LCD for the letters, like I said, take the higher power. That's what both letters can do into the higher one. And that's pretty much it for this whole thing. About uh, maybe 80% of this will be seen again next class with the equations. It's going to be about mostly about finding the common factor, about factoring uh, the rational expressions, you may have two or three or more in one equation. So you want to find the LCD first. So you could use that LCD to cancel all the denominators, then solve. So you, if you see an equation like this, next class, after you cancel the denominator, it may turn into an equation like this, for example. It's going to turn into something as simple as this. That's the purpose of, you know, factoring and finding LCD. Then this is an easy one to solve. So it will be basically turning some complex equations like this into some, something like this or some second degree, maybe some second degree and you solve them by factoring like we did uh, before the midterm. Uh, huh? Okay, any uh, questions everybody? Questions about any of this or should I give you a few problems to work on? Let me give you a couple of problems. Um, um, I have a question. You said that you're not going to be here maybe on Thursday, but then you have a lesson on Thursday. He has a lesson, meaning a previous recording of the lesson of the class of Thursday. So like... That's right. That's right. So I, I, get, like, I get that. But my issue, my issue, even with the addition and subtraction, is that when you watch the lectures, um, sometimes you want to ask questions just to clarify maybe some small <coughs> parts that you can't because you're watching a lecture. Right. So. Well, uh, ask your questions next class with the other professor. Try to understand as much as possible. Fortunately, I won't be there, but uh, that's what it is. And uh, we watch the, again, we're going to have some older lectures. Um, pretty sure they're going to be just like this, uh, believe I detail things. Yeah. So. Professor, you're going to have somebody substitute, even though you have the lecture up? Uh, yes. Um, the same person who substitutes oh, Watson God. will be there. But again, you know, each has their own way of teaching. Just try to understand as much as you can. 
ask questions, but again, lucky for us, I have the recordings from previous classes, so that should help. Okay, uh, thank God for technology. Before this pandemic, before this, we had classes on campus, physical classrooms, and there were no recordings. Basically, if you missed a class that said it's gone, you'll have to catch up on your own. But with this stuff now, technology and stuff, luckily I decided or I wanted to record all the lectures. I didn't have to, but I thought it was it was very helpful. I was uh, um, helping people. So even when someone misses class or when I don't show up, when I miss class myself, I can always uh, show you guys those videos and you can go with it. Yes? Professor, um, you took attendance? Not yet, not yet. Oh, okay. I'll take it in a few, few moments. Uh, let me first write some practice problems for you here. Um, are we going to have the homework for this lecture we do after the break? Yeah, yeah. I'll post, uh, I'll, when I post the lectures, I'll post the homework along with them. Okay. Uh, but are they going to be due like the first week of coming back from the break or are you going to give us a little more time? Uh, I'll probably... Uh, I'll leave it until when we come back. Um, since, yeah, it will be due after the break. Okay. Okay, so everybody go ahead and add these problems here or subtract them. Okay, that should do it. All right, take your time with these problems. Give you uh, 10 or so, 15 minutes. Uh, sorry, repeat that again. What did you get for the first one? It x plus five by x plus three. x plus five over x plus three. Mm -hmm. okay, very simple. Just add the tops, keep the denominator the same. What about this one? Uh, second one. So the common denominator is 6. 6x six cubed. 6 cube. x 3. 15x. Mm -hmm. 15x. Yes, 15x. Comes this by mm -hmm. 3. By 3. And this one here mm -hmm. by x. x, yeah. By x. Okay, very simple. But it wouldn't, wouldn't it be 15, 15 plus, x? plus x? 15 plus x, right? Yes. Times. Someone said 15x. Okay, 15 plus x. 15, it's it's same, right? 15 plus x no, or 15x? No, no 15 no? X means 15 no, times the other one I added. Oh. 15x, but it's a plus, so we add it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, what is <laughs> uh, the denominator here? The, uh, the common denominator? x minus 1, x plus 2. Basically, both of them, that's right, we complete one another. And of course, we're going to multiply this by, it's missing this one, x plus 2. And this one is also missing the other, so. x minus 1. Now, now the denominator stays the same, we're just going to combine these. So we've got 3x minus 4x will be negative x. We have 6 
first one, which is seven. Seven. Are you good? Okay, the last one here. You need to, what do you do first? But teacher, it's not seven, it's six. It's not seven. Yes, uh, it's seven. It's minus, oh. no, it's six. So we said uh, six and. No, 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 it's seven. It's, uh, it's not seven, it's six. Oh, seven. Hold on. No, plus six so and plus one is seven. Four and one, that's yeah. That's positive seven, right? Yeah, positive seven. Yes, minus mm -hmm. x, positive mm -hmm. seven. Wait a minute. Hold on. Back up. What What are we doing? Is it oh, three? Okay, you... I see. No, we're just combining the top. Okay, you can you can check that later. The important part is the LCD. Uh, here, what do you do first? But it's my it's plus six plus four though. By the way. Because it's you're multiplying by minus plus six plus four. four, so that would be exactly. No, no, no. Uh, when you it is, when yes, it is. You're multiplying <laughs> by minus four, minus four times minus one is plus four. Okay, okay. So yeah, that's the right answer. You, that's that's no problem. Okay, what do you do over here? Okay. So x minus six, x plus six. What else? Yes. And uh, x plus one times x plus five. So yeah. one x plus five. And now we're gonna do that. No, is is uh, number three? Uh, I'm still confused. How, how come there is minus x plus ten? Because you're multiplying minus four no, times it's, x. It's three times no, minus one. Times three six. It's three times two. Minus four times minus one. Minus four times minus one would be plus four. Positive uh, six, which we added to. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I did. Yeah, four one multiply one is minus one. That's why. Yes, yes. Right. So mm -hmm. for this one, that one is super long. Super long. Yes, yeah. super long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so basically, these two will be here, and also up here, and these two. Both of these will be here and up here. So basically all factors, all of these, they're all different, so we can have all of them here and here. And after that, just, that's the LCD. The LCD is basically all these four. <laughs> so that's the LCD and combine whatever you can here. I, do you distribute all the yeah, parentheses? Yeah, the top, yeah, you may have to do a lot of distribution okay. and simplifying. Uh, but don't worry about it. Uh, the way I planned it, I was uh, trying to get a common factor of x plus 6, but I, I messed up. But the concept is still the same. In fact, also the LCD here in this case will have four factors. And here, you can have a lot of things uh, to add. So what are we 7x plus 16x minus 139. <clears throat> yeah, so it would be basically three times these parentheses plus four times these parentheses here. 